it's time for some pastry. This is a... I think I've given you the recipe for this, I'm not sure. This is a blueberry and chocolate tart. Uh, very quick, very simple, very useful. And the reason I'm giving you a tart is because cooking pastry in your lager is totally simple. You do not ever, ever, ever have to bake pastry blind. <coughs> Baking blind is for people who iron. It's not something that happens in an argue kitchen at all. Why would you be blind? You look at all these recipes, and you know, particularly on the Sunday papers, they're always full of recipes, and they always say, make your pastry blind. And they go into lengthy, lengthy details of how to do it. You know, create your pastry, rub the fat into the flour, cut the water in with a knife, bring it to a beautiful dough, wrap it in cling film, and put it in the fridge to rest because it's exhausted. <laughs> It comes out of the fridge refreshed, you roll it out, and of course it's set like milk. So when you roll it out, it cracks. You squish it into your dish, and once again it's tired and it has to rest in the fridge for 10 minutes. And after the second 10 minutes stint in the fridge, you line it with baking parchment and those little beans from later. Mm. You haven't got any beans, and I have a gravel from outside the front door. <laughs> and it then goes into the oven for 10 minutes. And after 10 minutes in the oven, it comes out, and you lift up the parchment and it breaks. <laughs> and you've got hot gravel all over the floor. The dog burns her nose, chasing it round under the table. And then you have to put the pastry case back in the oven again to dry out. And at the end of all this, you have so far wasted the better part of an hour. <laughs> St. Delia says, brush the base of your cooked pastry case with beaten egg whites to make sure they are perfectly crispy. In Argoland, we unroll the packet of Just Roll and drop it in the dish. The dish goes in the oven, end of story. If you're not using Just Roll, put stuff in your pastry. I put a spoonful of cocoa powder in this pastry, so you know I've made it. If you're going to any effort whatsoever, people need to know. <laughs> you can put cocoa powder in pastry, coffee, orange rind, lemon rind. Spices, herbs, poppy seeds. Sometimes I put wholemeal flour in my pastry because you can't buy wholemeal just roll. There's a gap. But put stuff in your pastry, then people know you've done it. And if I'm actually going to go berserk and make pastry and roll it out all over my work surface, I make six. And I like roll them out and I put them in dishes and then I put the dishes in plastic bags in the freezer. So that when I need pastry, I've got it. So when my son and 12 of his friends, who all row, who were all... They come into the house and they say, Hello, Mrs. Whittaker. Is there anything to eat? <laughs> <laughs> you know what a teenage boys in life. And Super Mommy just reaches into the freezer and out comes a pastry case. In goes whatever's in the fridge. Anything. Roast potatoes, anything. We've all got little pots in the fridge with stuff in. Too much to throw away because it's wasteful, but not enough to put into anything sensible. In our house, it all goes into a pastry case, and it's called Resurrection Pie. <laughs> and if you just produce leftover roast potatoes and say, here's lunch, they look at you and they think, oh, we're not going there again. Whereas if you produce a tart, they think you've made a bit of an effort for them, and they come back again. <laughs> so for this tart, I'm going to start off... I've got chocolate pastry, and I've got a packet of chocolate, which I put into a bowl and put on the argo. This is how you melt chocolate. You put it in a bowl, you put it on the argo, you go and drink a cup of coffee, you do a medium-sized crossword. <laughs> Chocolate's melted. Um, you know if you melt chocolate the way other people do? You put it in a bowl and you set it over a pan of simmering water, and the water boils, and it touches the bottom of the bowl, and it overheats the chocolate, and the chocolate seizes up and it goes grainy and bitty. And once that's happened, you can't cook with it anymore. All you can do is just take it into the corner with a teaspoon because it's really not fit to use. <laughs> the really bad news is you can leave chocolate on your agar for a week in a nice Betty Twyford earthenware jar that says beef dripping on the outside. But <laughs> foil them in, you can leave chocolate quite safely until they find it. And it usually takes them several days. So I've got melted chocolate. The next thing I've got is a couple of ounces of butter melting as well. Obviously at home, you put the chocolate and the butter in the bowl. But um, I wanted you to see that you can safely put these plastic pasta sauce pots on the agar. Bit of brown sugar, just to make a lovely fudgy base. 
and then some eggs. This is three eggs because it's a nine inch dish. And you just mix it all together. Complicated cooking, but my goodness. Ask anything. So that, that chocolate paste you get, you haven't cooked that one yet. No. Nope. And um, you grease the dish? <laughs> <laughs> you can grease the dish. The lady's not for turning. <laughs> no. Have you got the liner underneath? No, I haven't. No, but I use butter in the pastry. Yeah. If you use margarine in your pastry, it will stick to the dish. If you put butter in the pastry, it doesn't stick. Greasing stuff there. Well, I'm doing lots of <laughs> The great thing about cooking is most of what they tell you, you can ignore it. <laughs> you know, baking blind, peeling potatoes, just forget it. With an agar, there's no need. The agar is the perfect tool for cooking because just, you don't need to worry about most things. The next thing I've got here is a lovely packet of blueberries. You could use cherries, you could use blueberries, you could use cranberries. Um, you could use damsons, um, anything that's firm, even raspberries. You just tip them into the bottom of the dish, spread them out, and then pour the chocolate sludge over the top. And if you can wait till it's been in the oven, it's even better. <laughs> so I've got chocolate pastry, chocolate, butter, sugar, eggs bit of fruit so you are getting something of your five a day, <laughs> or at least in the general direction of healthy. Did you say put sugar in the eggy mixture as well? I put brown sugar in to make it really fudgy. Um, and depending what's in season, it's lovely with cranberries at Christmas. Don't just think cranberry sauce, put cranberries in things. Raspberries, blueberries. And that's now ready to bake. To bake that, it goes into the roasting oven onto the floor. You know, I said earlier, the floor of the roasting oven is nearly as hot as the boiling plate. Use the floor of the roasting oven as a cooking surface. If you put your pastry onto the floor of the roasting oven, it crisps up and cooks beautifully from below. So, to make room for it, I'm going to take out the cake. I'm going to put the dish onto the floor of the oven. All the pastry on the base of a dish goes onto the floor of the oven for a crispy base. Whether it's chocolate and blueberry pie, quiche Lorraine or beef wellington, mm. all pastry goes onto direct contact with the floor of the oven for a crispy base. Mm. Pizza goes onto the floor of the oven for a crispy base. A bought pizza takes half the time it says in the packet, just so that you are aware. If your pizza says 12 minutes, it's done in six or seven. You leave it for the full 12 minutes, you have a little black frizz. Mm -hmm. But think positive, it's very good for fire lighters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the cheese burns beautifully. Mm -hmm. So the pastry sits on the floor of the oven. In order to get... There is the blueberry and chocolate tart, all puffed up. As you watch, it will sink. Cool. It sinks back to a nice, even, flat top. And of course it has to be a bit of icing sugar scattered over the top just to show we've made an effort.